If you found this video, you are most likely already familiar with CRISPR technology that is going to change our life. But if I told you that CRISPR 2.0 is already knocking on the door, meet Beam Therapeutics, first public company that bring CRISPR to the next level. Hello, my name is Marat and I'm a PhD student in medicinal chemistry and this is the second video in CRISPR related series. If you haven't watched the first one about CRISPR therapeutics, you can find it in the description. And now let's dive into BIM Therapeutics. BIM technology based on base and prime editing that unlike original CRISPR-Cas9 system doesn't require double-stranded braid and while original CRISPR system compared to scissors, BIM technology normally compared to eraser and pencil. This is important due to potential unwanted changes to DNA in the process of repairing it back to a single piece. During the process known as non homologous end joining, there is a chance of mistake in the DNA repair process that could lead to undesired and potentially dangerous outcome. This approach is useful for switching off undesired or malfunctioning genes, and it is applied in several drug candidates in clinical trials that aim to treat sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia. Switching off one of the genes allows for production of fetal hemoglobin that normally produced only when baby is inside mother's body. Most genetic diseases could be treated only with correction instead of disruption, genetic code of DNA. Traditional CRISPR-Cas9 suggests possibility of homologous directed repair, or HDR for short, using additional DNA template that guide DNA repair, allowing for accurate change in DNA sequence. However, this method has many drawbacks, and the main of them poor performance inside living cells, and especially inside human cells. A study from late 2019 says HDR efficiency compared with non-homologous and joining is inherently low. Link to all the materials used in this video will be in the description. And this study concludes that, unfortunately, none of HDR-based precise mutations, except for non-homologous and joining mutations, were detected by sequencing, meaning that they were unable to achieve desired changes in DNA using HDR methods. This fact indicates significant challenges that had to be addressed before this approach could be translated into clinical trials. And as of right now, in April 2021, zero drugs candidates based on HDR repair mechanism are in clinical trials. Now I would like to play you some short fragment of the interview with the guy who invented base editing method and what he's saying about future of gene editing and HDR in specific. Unfortunately, uh, we now know that this process of homology-directed repair or HDR as it's called, uh, which is oh, the way that a double-stranded break can be turned into a precise edit, uh, is, is unfortunately not general. And uh, virtually no therapeutically relevant cell types support uh, HDR with an efficiency that would be considered useful uh, for at least for therapeutic applications. Here you have it. And I strongly suggest watching this whole interview if you want to know more about the science involved. This is where beam therapeutics is coming to a rescue with its based editing technique that can offer precise DNA edits without double-stranded breaks. It uses modification of CRISPR-Cas9 that is coupled with enzyme that convert cytosine to thymine or adenine to guanine with deamination process that is done by linked enzyme. This is why company with zero clinical trials in their pipeline valued at $5 billion. Let's now talk about the leadership of BIM. It was founded by same people who founded editors, David Liu, Kate Jong, and Feng Zhang. But apart from them, two postdocs from David Liu Research Group are founders as well, Alexis Komar and Nicole Gaudeli. It is so good to see postdocs invited to be founders of this company, as it quite often all the glory and money goes to professor only, but I am impressed with how David Liu handles this situation. In my opinion, the main figure is David Liu, as he is inventor of base editing technology that led to a foundation of beam therapeutics. Now, as we move to our pipeline, we can see that they also target beta thalassemia and sickle cell disease, 
but not only with classical disruption mechanism that upregulate fetal hemoglobin, they have additional drug candidate BIM-102 that is focused on correction of DNA instead of disruption that should lead to a production of regular hemoglobin. And this approach has big advantage as most of the people already have the same DNA sequence in their genes and long-term effects are more predictable. Then I would like to mention another drug candidate that in my opinion stand out from competitors, BIM-201 as it successfully makes four corrections in DNA to create CAR T cells with desired properties to target leukemia. Four changes to DNA at the same time allows for higher precision CAR T cells compared to the competitors. And I believe this will be definitely advantage for them in the long term. As we discussed beam based editor technology, you can see why people are willing to pay premium price for a company without clinical trials. One of heavy buyers into BIM is ARK Invest that has been buying BIM after recent price decline as crazy. ARK is confident in genetic revolution in general and it's nice to see them adding BIM therapeutics not only to the ARK-G fund but also to ARK-K fund. Now it's time to look at BIM's financials. And to be honest, it's not brilliant. With 300 million in cash and spending around 150 million in 2020, and with expensive clinical trials about to start, I estimate that they will double spending this year again to reach 300 million. That makes it highly likely to see new shares issuing following some good news about pipeline progress. And this is why it's so important to use dollar cost averaging approach when you buy buying shares. Analysts are very optimistic about this company and average 12 months price is around $112 per share. That equivalent to 60% upside from around $70 per share as of right now. And I tend to agree that BIM will be growing with each good news about pipeline progress. And when clinical trials will be announced, I expect to see pop in share price. At the end, I need to mention that other companies are catching up and Perkin Elmer as well as Intelia already mentioned base editors in their press releases. It could be seen as bad news as more competition means sharing total addressable market. But on the bright side, it's verifying importance of base editing as a next chapter in CRISPR's story. Nobody can tell for sure total addressable market for CRISPR, but for reference, we can use estimates from ARK Invest white paper and it says that 250 billion of annual sales in CRISPR related CAR T cells and on top of this 75 billion of sales in monogenic diseases and I have to say that monogenic diseases according to this report are only 2% of whole genetic diseases and from this standpoint if you would be able to cure all genetic diseases and cancers Sky is the limit for these companies. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe to my channel as I'm planning to make my next video about patent war in CRISPR field.